what we've been waiting for really for the past now two days. Uh, the court finally unsealing several high profile names uh, of those in Jeffrey Epstein's orbit. Uh, and that was due to this lawsuit uh, that was filed over the Ghislaine Maxwell case. I want to put a, uh, some video up of Epstein there. We now know that nearly 200 names that had previously been redacted from court documents in a lawsuit against Jeffrey Epstein's former lover and accomplice, Ghislaine Maxwell, have been made public on orders of this federal judge there in New York. And this is what we know. Some of those names, big names on the list, they include former President Bill Clinton, uh, Epstein's estranged longtime aide, Doug Band, Prince Andrew, member of the royal family, of course, brother to King Charles, and the French modeling agent, Jean-Luc Brunel, uh, who, like Epstein, died while awaiting trial. Uh, so in the meantime, we want to bring into the conversation now uh, more experts to kind of help us analyze all of this. Well, what does this mean for the Jeffrey Epstein story and saga? Moving forward, of course, Jeffrey Epstein died by suicide in a jail cell in 2019 at the Manhattan Correctional Center. Ghislaine Maxwell is serving a 20-year prison sentence. And some of Epstein's victims uh, have gotten settlements from banks like J.P. Morgan Chase and also Deutsche Bank over their ties to Epstein's. Uh, and they were, of course, uh, the banks that he did his finances from. Let's bring into the conversation right now senior legal analyst with The Messenger, Adam Klasfeld. He knows so much about this story. He joins me. Um, Adam, thanks for being with us here. Uh, so the delays are over. We have some names. I have um, this now almost a hundred page kind of exhibit here. This is just one exhibit with some uh, of these names right. here. Um, have you poured over any of this here? Did anything surprise you if you have? So just to give your viewers a little bit of background, these files were just released shortly before our interview. I think right. it, they broke at around the seven o'clock hour. Some of my colleagues at The Messenger have been pouring over them. One of the revelations that came about, there was a deposition by one of Epstein's victims, uh, Johannes Jorsberg. And she, one of his alleged victims, Ms. Schmorsberg, had said in a deposition that uh, Jeffrey Epstein allegedly told her that former President Clinton uh, liked them young. That was one of the quotes that uh, some of my colleagues found uh, at the Messenger. In the same uh, in the same deposition file, there was a reference to former President Trump. Uh, it said that uh, she was not asked to give him a massage. Uh, there, uh, there have been other references uh, in different documents to uh, Prince Andrew, uh, who your viewers may remember, uh, that uh, Virginia Giuffre, who's the woman who filed the lawsuit against Ghislaine Maxwell that set all of this into motion, had also filed a lawsuit against Prince Andrew. Now, it, her allegations go into a little bit more detail in the unsealed filings. She says in one of the filings, she alleges that she was forced into an orgy uh, with the prince. Uh, so we are, as you noted, this is a large stack of files. Uh, journalists are certainly going to be pouring over it to see how many of these allegations are new, how many of these allegations are rehashed. This is, uh, these documents have been around in under seal in a court record for quite a long time. Uh, and it also must be emphasized that uh, they include people who aren't necessarily accused of wrongdoing. A lot of the uh, allegations and the, the, these are not, it's been sometimes described as a client list. It is not. No. It's a list of people who are tied in some way, whether uh, they met one of Epstein's victims, whether they are an alleged victim uh, themselves. Uh, it's a long list of people who, whose identities have been uh, under seal for various reasons, and some of whom we've heard about from media reporting. Some of them we may be hearing about the first time, and it's okay. going to take some time to process and digest these documents. Yeah, just for our viewers who are uh, joining us right now, we have an 89-page uh, exhibit that was just released. This is the first batch uh, in the Epstein documents that were just released uh, before uh, Adam came on to talk with us here. You know, Adam, that kind of seemed to be the theme going into the first release here, that we weren't going to really learn anything 
knew that we might get more, you know, of the color and tawdry details of some of the interactions of some of these high profile individuals in Epstein's orbit, like, you know, Bill Clinton, Donald Trump, Prince Andrew, what have you here. Um, but a lot of people possibly were expecting some new names and we had br brought on some guests who were somewhat describing it as a client list. And to your point, um, this is a list of people who worked for Epstein, uh, who, uh, you know, had business with Epstein, who maybe was at a party once with Epstein, as innocuous as that. So it really kind of runs the gamut here, does it not? I mean, as far as ramifications go, you know, once we get all of these documents unsealed, we pour over them, do you anticipate more legal recriminations happening in the Epstein saga? Uh, you know, more lawsuits filed by victims, more people speaking out? It's hard to say, but it's useful to have a historical perspective on that point. Now, the reason that these documents are coming out uh, is part of the same litigation that set all of this in motion. It was the lawsuit filed by Virginia Giuffre, uh, now Virginia Roberts, to uh, against Ghislaine Maxwell. And it probably could be argued that Ghislaine Maxwell would not have been prosecuted if not for this lawsuit. And more importantly, the open records battle that followed this lawsuit, because all of these documents have been kept under seal under the terms of a settlement. It took an unsealing fight brought forward by the Miami Herald and its reporter, Julie K. Brown, who brought this to court uh, as an open records battle and won up to the Second Circuit Court of Appeals so, uh, starting a string of releases. And the first batch of releases brought enough pressure that provoked, that started the first prosecution of Jeffrey Epstein and after his suicide, the prosecution of Ghislaine Maxwell and her ultimate conviction. Right. There have been other little litigation since then. There has been uh, litigation looking at the financing of Jeffrey Epstein sure. against uh, banks involved. Uh, in that where he has been a client and the bankers that he has engaged with. And through that litigation, we learn uh, new uh, people who may be connected to him. And we knew we learn new information, new allegations. Uh, and there's, you know, it, I, I won't make predictions, but in the release of information, it, it enhances our understanding. And historically, I'll say, it has led in the past to more litigation, more public understanding, and more information coming forward. You know, Adam, I want to get your thoughts uh, and maybe some of your reporting to suggest as well, um, because there were still fights happening uh, in, in some of these redacted names, whoever they are, uh, these Jane and Joe Doe's, John Doe's rather, um, were really fighting tooth and nail uh, to keep their names redacted. There are several fights like that still playing out, are they not? There are. As a matter of fact, there was uh, one report uh, that uh, some of the releases would be delayed on account of one of the Jane Doe victims uh, speaking to prevent the release of her name, fearing for her safety. That litigation is still going on, and there are a number of other unidentified does who are for various reasons that could be reasons of personal safety. What the judge has made clear is that mere embarrassment isn't going to cut it. Now, oh. we, there have been, and we've seen through these releases, embarrassing information. I think it would be fair to say that this, uh, some of the headlines already that this release has produced has been embarrassing to Prince Andrew, has been embarrassing to uh, former President Clinton. Uh, what one can debate uh, the the kind of import of it, uh, whether, and there, there will surely be responses okay. to what was said in those depositions. Uh, but the, the judge has made clear that uh, there are valid reasons for sealing and embarrassment isn't going to cut it. So um, reputational harm, uh, to your point, that, that is not a standard the judge wants uh, to kind of consider or contend with for some of these individuals who really contested uh, and like I said, fought tooth and nail, still are, to keep their names redacted here uh, as well. You know, a lot of people were 
kind of griping about why this was delayed for so long. And of course, you could say, you know, justice delayed is not necessarily justice denied. Uh, we have all of these documents now. We have to pour through them as well. What are you going to be looking for uh, as you pour them over? Uh, so and what we'll be looking for is a we're going to look for the information that we had in the past versus where we where things stand now. Okay. Um, it should be emphasize that a lot of the people whose names appear on these documents haven't been accused of wrongdoing, and that includes from President Clinton, despite the uh, deposition uh, saying what he, uh, what, what Jeffrey Epstein allegedly told one of the victims, uh, that there will be looking into Prince Andrew. Obviously, there was going to be a uh, there was a lawsuit filed against him. That lawsuit ended in a settlement, leaving some mysteries unsolved. Uh, so they're going to be we're going to check the names. Uh, journalists are going to see uh, who who how this enhances our understanding of folks who are already known to be uh, connected to this saga and where the public record. Uh, fell short and how it can be continued with this tranche of information that's released. It has been a very long road, uh, as you noted. Yeah. Um, and the, it just, the information keeps trickling out. Yeah. So uh, the book not quite shut yet uh, on the Epstein saga. Adam Klasfeld, thanks so much for your time. Talk soon. Thank you for having me. All right, uh, so we're going to stay with this story throughout the night here. I want to put up this tweet from our friends there at Fox 32 in Chicago saying the Jeffrey Epstein list, the court has unsealed names in the Ghislaine Maxwell suit, uh, and we are pouring over all 89 pages of them here at Live Now from Fox. Uh, we do thank uh, Adam Klasfeld for his expertise. He's followed this story from the very beginning, uh, and so we'll continue to do that tonight here as well. So uh, we do want to take a quick commercial break. We have a lot more top headlines coming up. We'll see you in two minutes.